Welcome! This video provides a best student practice on using factor and regression analysis to understand foreign market selection. It was produced in the context of an assignment in my course on research methods. The course is part of the International Business Master Program at the University of Southern Denmark. The team of students performs an international market selection process, mainly building on one article by Gaston Breton and Martin from 2011. For this purpose, they perform both factor and regression analysis and provide an excellent example of how to use the research methods in the context of international market analysis. Have fun watching the video. We're going to present you our assignment using factor and regression analysis to understand foreign market entry. Who we are? I'm Boriana. I'm Isabella. I'm Kasper. And I'm Sophie. The agenda is that we're going to present you an introduction, our hypothesis, the factor and regression analysis, and our final interpretation. Now we come to the introduction. We are using the Stones 2 stage international market selection and segmentation model for Euro European countries as foundation for our assignment. We attempted to recreate his findings for EU countries for 208 world countries and regions for Greenfield FDI. The modes of foreign market entry we wanted to explore are FDI inflow and greenfield FDI. However, due to data limitations, we base our hypothesis only on greenfield FDI. In addition to Gaston's finding, we are going to add an additional hypothesis about the impact of the institutional environment for foreign direct investments as it implies long-term commitment. We exclude the informal institutions, namely the cultural influences, as they are the basis for the development of the formal institutions. Taking these factors into account, our objective is to investigate foreign market entry by using factor and regression analysis for world countries and regions. Our sample included 208 world countries and regions, and our initial amount of variables was 19. The measurements we chose were based on data from World Bank, Freedom House, Transparency, OECD, UNESCO, World and Open, Eurostat and Jungtat. Uh, as you can see, our data set included uh, 19 different variables and we're going to proceed with Isabella. Next, we come to talk about our three hypotheses. Our first research hypothesis is the larger the market size, the higher the greenfield FDI. Here we try to recreate Gaston's findings for EU countries on our number of 208 world countries and regions. The expected countries with a larger market size receive more greenfield FDI as they are more promising. Our next hypothesis is the larger the development, the higher the greenfield FDI. This hypothesis builds also on Gaston's model. Here we expect that countries with larger market development receive more greenfield FDI as they are more attractive for FDI decision makers. Our third hypothesis is our own contribution as we're interested in exploring if democratic institutions are positively related to greenfield FDI. As it is argued in literature that democratic institutions can provide more favorable policies towards multinational enterprises. Therefore, we expect that in countries with higher civil liberties and political rights, there will be higher greenfield FDI. Originally, we had more hypotheses and factors planned, but for this presentation, we just present Gaston's two factors plus one additional. Now we come to our factor analysis. The first step to conduct is to formulate the problem. We had two objectives with our exploratory approach. First, to identify underlying dimensions, and second, to bundle the 18 variables to a smaller set of uncorrelated factors. The expected to use Greenfield FDI is our dependent variable and the remaining 18 ones is our independent variables grouped in five factors. Casper will continue to explain. These five factors are market development, economic, political institutions, regularity control and market size. Before we can perform the factor analysis, we needed to go through a few tests. The first models performed badly mostly due to the KMO and MSA tests. After four rejected models, we had an acceptable result on all parameters. Model number 5 had only a few variables with correlations below 0.3 across the expected factor. Therefore, we performed Bartlett's test, which led to the rejection of the zero hypothesis. This indicates that there were correlations in the dataset and is appropriating for continuing. 
Furthermore, both the KMO and MSHS were all over the threshold. We therefore continued with the extraction of the factors. Model 5 resulted in an optimal solution of three factors, which can explain 75% of the dataset used and still obtain an eigenvalue above 1. We rotated the metrics and named the components market development, market size, and democratic institution. The last one is renamed from political institutions since the variable political constraints is removed from the factors. Therefore, Bailey's definition of democratic institutions fits better. Our expected and realized factors didn't match one to one. This is mostly caused by data limitations, which led to a reduction of the original 18 variables to 12 variables. Therefore, the dimension reduction resulted in only three factors. This led to only political constraint and electrical power consumption not matching the expected factors. Now SOFR will continue. Now we proceed with our regression analysis. We put our hypothesis in a formula. With this regression model, we wanted to explain the impact of the changes of our independent factors on our dependent variable. This means we think that the number of Greenfield FDI is explained by market development, market size and democratic institutions. The first result of our analysis shows that the R squared explains 55.3% of the variance in the number of Greenfield FDI by our three predictors. In addition, we are able to say that our model does explain a significant part in the variation of the number of Greenfield FDI because the F-test shows significance on the 1% level. Therefore, we can reject the zero hypothesis. This means there is a linear relationship between all the dependent variables considered together and the number of Greenfield FDI. When we have a look at the strength and direction of the relationships, we can see that there is evidence that market size followed by market development significantly affects the number of Greenfield FDI. The result also shows that the factor democratic institutions is the least important driver for Greenfield FDI and does not have a significant impact. The variance inflation factor measuring the multicollinearity scores below 5 for all predictors which indicates no issue of multicollinearity and that the information is not redundant. Also, we are able to say that, for example, the number of Greenfield FTI will also increase on average by 0.76% if the factor of market size increases by 1. In the next step, we try to improve our model by excluding democratic institutions. The adjusted R squared points out that the model 6 without the latter factor has a lower explanatory power Therefore, we keep the factor and continue with model 5. Looking at the histogram and the significance test for normality, we can reject the zero hypothesis of normal distribution, which means we do have a non-constant variance of residuals. Therefore, we conclude that there are most probably missing relevant determinants for the number of Greenfield FDI. Due to our data limitation, we cannot improve the model any further. Now, Boriana proceeds with the final interpretations. In total, we conducted six different models. The best model was chosen due to its explanatory power and, si and significance and good fit with Gaston's theoretical framework. We did not have issues with multicollinearity, meaning we didn't have data redundancy. The model doesn't have constant variance of residuals, which implies we might miss relevant determinants of the number of Greenfield FDI. Furthermore, the histogram and Kolmogorov's Mirnov's tests of normality indicated that our error terms are not normally distributed. Nevertheless, due to data limitations, we couldn't improve the model further. Based on our model, we were able to use Gaston's theory and confirm hypothesis 1 and 2 for G Greenfield FDI. Thus, we can conclude that countries with a larger market size attract a higher number of Greenfield FDI. Moreover, we confirmed our expectations that countries with greater development also tend to attract higher number of Greenfield FDI. In regard to hypothesis 3, we concluded that democratic institutions are not affecting the number of Greenfield FDI in a positive way, leading to the rejection of the hypothesis.
As mentioned before, we faced some data limitations. Due to missing data, we had to exclude six variables and 140 countries and regions, and were able to test our hypothesis only for Greenfield FTI. This led to the issue of non-constant variance of residuals for Greenfield FTI and limited us in terms of testing other hypotheses related to Holmes' theory. Future implications. Based on our model, our recommendation for companies is to do Greenfield FDI in countries with either huge market size, higher development, or ideally both. For future researchers, it would be relevant to examine the data set clustered into regions, development, and cultural distance to receive more accurate results. We further recommend the relationship between regulatory control and Greenfield FDI to be examined, likewise the relationship between economic institutions and Greenfield FDI. Thank you for your attention.